And you and I, I think both of you said that Q1, Q2 is kind of where you expect that to happen of 2023 is when that their realization is going to finally come through for the manufacturers. So that being said, let's talk about Q3, Q4. What are the thoughts for Q3, Q4 if we're expecting manufacturers to come to say, hey, we got to lower these hurt charges in Q1, Q2. What are we looking at uh, starting Q3? And Shane, I'll, I'll pass that one off to you. If they, it, it all depends on how much stock is built up in their yards. And that's where the thing, they have overpriced inventory that is sitting there. And if they're not willing to take that hit onto it, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be an epic year and not an epic year in the, the, the thriving way, obviously. It'll be an epic year in our whole industry as, as far as how much it's fallen off if uh, if that doesn't change. So Q3, if 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 surcharges don't, um, if, if they don't lower substantially, um, then it, it's, it's I feel that it, it's going to be an extremely challenging, challenging quarter three and quarter four for 2023. Uh, for for everybody in that point, not just obviously it starts with the dealers because they got to sell the product that turns over to the manufacturers there by from building that sort of that turnover ratio. So uh, if they do um, if they do realize what's going on and if they're if they're listening to these casts and stuff like that and realize you know what yeah you might have some overpriced inventory right now just like obviously we do in our lot but you got to figure out something to take a loss now but instead of taking a bigger loss later on. So that forward thinking is, is key. And that's where I'm trying to um, uh, mitigate my losses as best I can by managing my inventory and not having too much surplus, obviously stock and putting some more discounts on units right now to get rid of them. So I'm not paying as much interest, obviously over the winter time for floor planning. And on top of that, getting prepared hopefully for some of these bigger uh, drops in surcharges so I can stock back up to be competitive there for it. So I'm already stocked up like everybody else probably is uh, that's listening, but uh, you also don't want to be obviously too, uh, you don't want to be, you don't want to be overwhelmed with inventory. I feel um, unlike last year and the year before, whereas in, if, if you were, then you were thriving and obviously you, you really excelled. I think 2023 is going to be the year, whereas in, if you have too much inventory in your hands and uh, with what's coming up, with, with I feel of how the, the whole economy is going and that sort of thing. And we're potentially hitting the recession, who knows whether we are or not, but everyone has their different opinions, but either way, we can definitely see that things have uh, dropped off. Then you, you need to be really watching that. And that's the, the main thing. It's just making sure that your overhead costs are down and uh, you're making obviously the best decisions for, for your employees and yourself there. So. No. Nick. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm seeing, I don't want to sound like negative Nancy, but I'm thinking there's going to be a 10 to 15 percent on the retail per dealership closure throughout next year. And I think it'll be a 15 to 20 percent for manufacturers going out of business. Um, if you look back to the previous three years of shows and how many new young manufacturers there are, I think they're going to have tough times to make it through this. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be a rough, rough year. I think uh, something that I think has been come through from both of you on this, especially for those young manufacturers out there, is working with the dealers and understanding how to mitigate that a little bit, getting those surcharges down. I think that's going to be important. I think it's an um, important distinction. I, I do want to kind of move towards the ordering aspect because Shane, in 07, 08, you had only been in the industry for around four years. Let's look at maybe some of the new dealers that are, are facing this now. What should they be doing to be prepared? And let's talk specifically ordering because we just talked about the inventory and maybe discounting things and trying to get it off a lot as quickly as possible. But when it comes to ordering for 2024, excuse me, or 2023, what are these new dealers supposed to do? And Nick, I'll let you start with that one. I would order uh, very slim. Um, I'm trying to average out all my old inventory right now. Usually by December, I have uh, months and months of inventory booked. I don't have anything booked. Um, I'm sitting just shy of 800 units in stock. We normally average 550 to 600. 13 months ago, I was down to 32. So it, it, it's just been such a 12 month spin. You know, you, you went from so desperate to take anything to now I got manufacturers uh, 
they're they're shipping uh, inventory that I ordered three years ago. I watch the semis come around the corner. I'm looking at the stuff and I'm going through my orders. I'm like, what? Everybody's just getting so desperate. It's like I literally spend every day on the computer watching all the factories and what's in production for myself. Um, because yeah, I mean it 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 it's tough and then. You look back in 22 years that I've been in business, I got repeat customers that buy the same seven by 16 enclosed trailer. It was always $4,500. Well, like Shane said, it they doubled. It's nine grand now, and the, the, the quality is not there. It's almost embarrassing to be selling some of this stuff right now. So I, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, what months to come, things are gonna have to spin around and and change a little bit of better quality, better material. You know, we we just need to do a 180 the opposite direction, I think, to come out of the stronger. Shane. Yeah, some of what Nick said is is exactly nailed it right on the head there with it. I uh, would just be watching what you order. I wouldn't uh, the the difference between now today and a year or two ago was a year or two ago even 12 months ago, you'd be waiting six months to nine months, to even a year for a trailer. These manufacturers now at this point are back down to standard lead times within four to six to eight weeks there for a lead time for a trailer. So the, the good aspect of that, if you are a new dealership to be able to sell a client, that's not a huge lead time. You know, when you are six plus months, that is a lead time, whereas then you're going to lose the sale over that, even if you are a thousand dollars cheaper or whatever like that, because the guy needs it. He's not going to wait that long to operate his business there. Whereas in, you know, to for a lead time of four to six weeks, which is kind of standard with most product, unless it's something custom, a consumer can wait that time frame. They've always waited that time back, even in 20, you know, 2008, right? So um, I would say you got to have something to sell it. Um, there's no question there. You're not going to be able to sell just, you know, by a brochure. But just make sure you're um, just taking the, the most popular sizes of, uh, of trailers and in, in not having a surplus of them for 2023 is, I think, the, the best bet. So, so on that on that same idea of, of you know, you got to have something to sell it. You know, as of right now, everybody's got those. Yeah. Right? It, it's in on everybody's lot, which means, you know, just like you said, Shane, de dealers are striking prices, trying to get it off the lot so that we can, you know, save ourselves a little bit there um nick you brought up the the fact that there are some manufacturers selling to not trailer dealerships selling it out to other types of dealerships how are trailer dealers supposed to compete in that range and uh, nick i'm gonna let you tackle that one first but if they're you know if you're already competing against other trailer dealers themselves, and now you're potentially having to compete with auto dealerships or anything like that. What's what's a dealer to do? It's it started at the show already, and I could not believe the way some of these huge companies were dumping inventory to people that weren't even their dealers. I mean, I'm getting everybody's inventory list with all these specials people I've never even bought from, and the guy up the road is selling it. I mean, where's the loyalty? It, it, we're all in this together, and if if everybody's going to just worry about themselves, it's just gonna make this situation a lot worse. And uh, I, I just never thought, you know, that these factories would just start cold calling people and dumping inventory to Joe Blow after all these years of franchises and territories. And I mean, since the show, it, it just, I, I can't even fathom it. It just blows my mind what's going on right now. Shane, do you have any comment? Same, I, I've noticed a few different car dealerships and stuff popping up as well, selling trailers. And uh, I would just say you get a, Choose your partners wisely. Have those conversations with the manufacturers in private. Um, let them know how you feel, and uh, ultimately, if if it's something that they're not willing to work with you on and, and understand, then it may be finding a new partner. Because right now, I'll tell you what: you can call up any single manufacturer, and they'd be happy to take you on. Back where 12 months ago, you could call anyone up. Doesn't matter if you're 
the size of Nick or myself uh, that we both do a substantial amount of volume, they wouldn't even be able to take us on where that's something that we've never heard before in the last decade where somebody's saying, no, we, you know, we don't want your business, obviously, in that case for, for big volume dealerships because people are always knocking on our door. It's, it's, it's obviously uh, the table's changed in, but uh, so yeah, if, if, you're, if your partners are doing that sort of thing, manufacturers, I would consider uh, if they're not willing to adjust and change their strategy and honor kind of your territories and that sort of thing, finding a new partner, which will be easy enough to, to do nowadays. So.